Home Life and Style is brought to you by The Pine Hills, offering inspired new homes and daily adventures just 45 minutes from Boston. Snow and Jones, a fixture in New England homes since 1952. Classic Tile and Stone, your tile and stone destination. Vineyard Home, elements for a fine home, including fireplace, music, video, and automation. And South Peak, your ultimate four season resort on Loon Mountain. I'm Parker Kelly. Welcome to Home Life and Style. <laughs> I am passionate about design, food, and travel. I love discovering new places, meeting new people, and sharing who they are, how they live, and what they love. In each episode, I'll introduce you to a new destination through the eyes of the people who call it home. Join me as we celebrate these towns, these people, these homes in style. Chef Rui Correa is here. Is this spectacular? Out Amazing. Here? Beautiful piece of land and a great space. So I wanted to steal you away from the kitchen just for a minute so we could talk about uh, your history as a chef. Um, I guess it all started for me as, as a young boy in Portugal. Uh, my grandparents had a very small bistro-like restaurant in the city of Porto. Uh, I, my grandmother, at, at a, as far as back as I can remember, would just stick things in my mouth, taste this, taste that, and that became my passion for food and flavor. Oh, she was developing your palate right then. She was developing my palate. And then I learned the passion of them working together. They worked together for 40 years. It was, it was humbling to see how hard they worked, and the reward was basically uh, very minimal compared to what chefs do today, but they loved what they did, and I kind of feel the same way today. The restaurant business is is tough. You know, people have that expression that says, uh, if you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life. Um, it applies, but it makes it very, it's very challenging in the restaurant business because you're, you're, you're basically working at, at your hardest when everybody else is enjoying life. For me, it all came, uh, all came full circle. When I was about 18 years old, I worked in a restaurant in Bronxville, New York with a chef that for the time was very avant-garde. He started to do like plating that was kind of like a little different using the ingredients I had never seen and um, he would always almost like my grandmother you would just constantly taste this taste yeah. this what do you think of that I was I was a server in the front of the house and he said to me what are you doing in the front of the house you belong in the back of the house nice no yes. one said that to me as I was a server all the way through oh, really? you know high school college you know growing up in a resort community for me no one ever said you really belong in the back of the house no he, he called it out and he said yeah. he said uh, why don't you go to culinary school or go get trained yeah. It brought me full circle to my grandmother's kitchen, right? So that my grandfather was in front of the house, but I, I always enjoyed being in the kitchen with my grandmother. Um, so when he, when he said that to me, it stuck with me for another year and a half, and eventually it got me to go to culinary school. And so in culinary school, did they teach Portuguese cooking? No. 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 Portuguese, Portuguese is not, uh, was not, it's becoming, it was not a mainstream cuisine. And when, I, when it was time for me to open my own place after having put in some time in restaurants, I thought it was just the responsible thing to do to go back to my, to my roots. You do have the American part where you've been here, but you have those roots, so you can, you're a great translator for, for America at I've large. been called an yeah. ambassador. An ambassador, right. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. So the area I'm from is Porto, which is the northern second largest city of Portugal. Uh, what most people don't know about Porto is that it has beautiful, beautiful fish and seafood off the coast. Uh, what I felt was unique was that we have a, a very rich f uh, profile of spices and influences because the Portuguese were the, the, the navigators of the world, right? We, we've right, the trade routes. Uh, trade routes. Um, last year in 2016, Portugal was awarded more Michelin stars than any other country in the world, where 10 years ago there wasn't a Michelin star in Portugal. You're kidding. And so talking about Douro, can we talk about uh, your restaurant now? Sure. So Douro opened uh, nine years ago in Greenwich. The local fresh ingredients, seasonal stuff, um, varietal of different ingredients that gives people more choices. So the restaurant has a nice buzz, it has a good feel. Yeah, a privilege really for me. Yes. With uh, Chef Rui Carrera. Really, thank you. Thank you.
It's like the marbling this morning, I'm telling you. Everything's about visual. It's so beautiful. And a little sea salt. Are you one of those chefs who like yells at everybody in the kitchen? Only if I need to. All right. As people started to arrive, it was finally time to get in the kitchen with Chef Rui and start cooking. Rui. Hey. <laughs> Out of the sun, into the kitchen. Awesome. All right, so tell us where we're gonna start. And this is called a caldo verde, which means a green soup. It's basically a potato that had been boiled down All right. uh, in a little bit of a vegetable stock. So this is a little bit of a collard green pesto that you serve in the soup. And now, now is that a surprise on the bottom or is that's, that? So that's, that's what I like, to, that's the play on the soup. The soup comes out to you white, we tell guests that they should stir the soup and the soup turns green on you and it kind of it makes a little bit of fun fun play while yeah, you eat. It's kind of like the yogurt yeah. with the fruit on the bottom. There you go. And then it's infused with a little bit of pork sausage, chorizo. So the soup that we're going to serve for the first course is called caldo verde, potato, collard green and chorizo soup. The crowds are behind us, uh, they're just about to sit down. We're going to plate or bowl, shall yes. we? The, uh, the very first one. So here we have the potato puree. The key is to go in nice and slow. Okay, so if, if this one doesn't come out accurately, this can be, this can be mine. Full ladle, full ladle, full ladle. Good. Now we're just going to take a little bit of olive oil. Oh, I love that. That's just like the marbling this morning, I'm telling you. Everything's about visual. It's so beautiful. And a little sea salt. Doesn't that just smell fantastic? Oh, gosh. And you know what? It's actually gotten a little bit dark now out and a little cooler, so it's perfect for some nice soup. Right now, right outside. Right. The next course, we're going to go on to this the octopus. Is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so what I like to do to the octopus is I take a large octopus, like a six to eight pound octopus. So what I do is I cook it down for about an hour and a half right. in low boiling water. To cook the octopus down until it's nice and tender, cut it up into pieces, and we're going to serve it today with a little bit of squid ink, okay. batata muhu, which mm -hmm. is a potato that's been punched when it's cooking so it releases the steam, and then quickly flash fried. Uh, house made vinegar peppers, and a little bit of really great Portuguese olive oil. So squid ink on its own is fairly salty and pungent and a little bit aggressive. So what I do is I take some onions, caramelize them down, put it in a food processor or a blender, puree it, and you get this really beautiful That's cool. I want squid to taste, ink. I want to taste, can't taste or no smell. Carol would like this too for art. Yes. You know, that'd yes. be really we can, cool. We can paint what do you think, Carol? Yes? So we're going to have a little bit of fun and paint the plates. I'm going to have you follow. You do the first one and I'll so follow So I'm going to do you. the first one here. Just be careful not to put too much. That's what I was thinking. Start here and just lightly, don't press too hard down. Meet back half the other way. Are you one of those chefs who like yells at everybody in the kitchen? Only if I need to. All right. I just want to be prepared. Oh gosh, that's so gorgeous. Look at that. Okay, so now we're going to apply the octopus. Perfectly cooked, super tender. So for the last course, cod. Now Portuguese use a lot of salt cured cod. Um, I try to work a little bit more fresh cod, it's a little more approachable to the American palate. So what we do is we take beautiful fresh cod. And that's what you have here. Yep, and we're gonna bake it in the oven a little parsley, a little bit of sea salt. Then we're gonna serve it over some cool chickpea puree. Mm -hmm. I like the rough texture of it against the flaky of the fish. It's kind of like, it feels like it's something meaty, right? But you're, you're eating healthy, yeah, you're eating light. Mm -hmm. It's stuff that your body can process fast and... Love it, love it, delicious. Then we're gonna saute really quickly some of this chiffonade of the collard greens. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna serve this on top of the fish. Complete and total artistry. An artist, the homeowner. An architect, the homeowner. The chef, Rui. Complete artistry, beautiful taste, beautiful home. Chin chin. Till next week, chin -chin. I'm Parker chin -chin. Kelly. Chin -chin. <laughs>